Hi, welcome back to Digit.in. My name is Vignesh. Yes, Asus has launched a new Vivo book, but no, sadly, it's not the same one we saw at this year's Computex. What that means is that you do not get a screen inside that touchpad, and in fact, you don't even get a small haptic number pad inside it this time. You get a plain vanilla Vivo book 14. What's new then? It comes with an MX230 this time, so the GPU has been upgraded. But let's see what else has been improved in this year's Vivo book. Let's start with the build and design. There's nothing particularly great about the VivoBook 14's build and design. The laptop is as interesting to look at as an empty glass of masala tea. On the outside, the VivoBook 14 uses only matte plastic for its top cover and base panel, and that shows through when you tap the surface of the laptop with your knuckles, like so. Still, it feels a whole lot more solid than the VivoBook S14 that we tested a few weeks ago. Gripping the lid firmly while opening it reveals signs of flex across the entire width of the display, which is a disappointing eyesore if you ask me. You don't see much flex on the keyboard island even while typing hard, and that's one encouraging fact about this laptop. Opening the display reveals a 14-inch LCD screen with a matte finish and fairly slim bezels all around. The color of the keyboard area and the keys matches that of the laptop's lid. On the review unit, it was plain silver. In fact, only the screen's bezels are in matte black. Everything else is monotone. The use of sharply colored accents or shades on the inside and outside would have improved the laptop's overall appearance greatly. The area around the keyboard gets a dotted finish, giving the laptop an iota of character. The VivoBook 14 is otherwise, quite sadly, boring to look at. Let's move on to the display. The ASUS VivoBook 14 has, as you can imagine, a 14-inch LCD panel with a full HD resolution. The colors on the display look mostly washed out and whitish, whether you're browsing on the web, watching a video, or playing a video game. Going by our test kit, the display is capable of reproducing 59% of the colors in the sRGB color space and 43% of the colors in the Adobe RGB color space. The VivoBook loses many points for not being able to reproduce over 90% of the colors in either color space, which is something every average laptop out there should be able to do. Max brightness is sufficient for indoor and outdoor use, and the screen's matte finish helps reduce glare. Sound from the two downfiring Sonic Master speakers on the VivoBook 14 is underwhelming at best. The ASUS VivoBook 14 is not shy to offer connectivity. On the left side of its body, there's a round pin power port for charging, a full-size HDMI port, a USB-A 3.1 port, a USB-C 3.1 port, and a 3.5mm audio jack for headsets. On the right side, we see a USB-A 2.0 port and a microSD card slot. We also see a Kensington lock slot and a couple of LED indicators for power and battery status. Another USB-A 3.1 port would not have gone amiss at all on the VivoBook 14, but most mainstream laptop users should have no reason to complain with the two that it has. The VivoBook 14 comes with a fingerprint scanner on the top right corner of its touchpad. The scanner works surprisingly accurately and takes less than a second to authenticate through Windows Hello. Let's move on to the keyboard. The VivoBook 14's keyboard is one of the laptop's most finely engineered components with just a couple of unflattering qualities. But we'll get to that in a moment. Let's talk about the good stuff. With a profile of 1.3 millimeters, the keys have just the right amount of travel and resistance. The keycaps are also well-spaced and well-sized. Typing, for the most part, is an absolute treat on the VivoBook 14. On the review unit, I found myself making very few mistakes or mistypes while writing my reviews and articles. When tapped on, the keys on the VivoBook 14's keyboard land with that definite thud and feels reassuring and final. This laptop is highly recommended for users who do a lot of typing day in, day out. The keyboard design on the VivoBook 14 is nearly perfect, barring two significant flaws. There are no dedicated keys for page up, page down, home and end functions on the keyboard, which means users who do a lot of typing will be forced to rely on key combinations for those functions. The second is the fact that the delete key is placed adjacent to the power button. One misclick and you may end up putting your laptop to sleep instead of making a text correction. The touchpad on the VivoBook 14 is a regular size precision unit. This means that it supports multi-finger taps and swipes natively if you're not straight away from the bundled Windows 10 operating system. 
you needn't install any third-party drivers or utilities to get the most of your touchpad. The buttons under the touchpad surface are fairly easy to click and the touchpad works well for pointer movement and file dragging. The VivoBook 14 scores top marks in the input devices department in summary. What about performance then? In everyday use scenarios, the VivoBook 14 review unit's performance was up to the mark. I was able to multitask on everyday applications with ease. The applications open across multiple virtual desktops were many instances of Chrome, OneNote, Word, Excel, Steam, File Explorer, and WhatsApp for PC. The laptop was able to handle browsing, background file transfers, and background downloads simultaneously without breaking a sweat. Gaming on the review unit happened in an understandably strained manner. Doom ran on the review unit on full HD resolution in Ultra at an average frame rate of 14 frames per second, bringing the setting down to medium almost double the average frame rate. Metro Last Light, on the other hand, ran on full HD resolution in very high at an average frame rate of 21 frames per second. Turning it down to medium made the average frame rate climb to 46 frames per second. Playing either game in ultra or very high nearly killed the laptop. Stutters and lags were easily visible. Medium worked out better for both games, which means that it's what you should go with if you're planning to play games on the VivoBook 14. In summary then, the VivoBook 14 isn't too great for playing new and popular titles, but it isn't shabby either. If your colleagues have been talking about a popular but slightly dated game like Metro 2033 at work and you want to play it, the VivoBook 14 should be up to the task. The same goes for lightweight image and video editing tasks. Okay, what about the battery then? On our standard battery benchmark test, the review unit scored an abysmally low 2 hours 25 minutes. In comparison, the Lenovo IdeaPad 530S from last year scored only 22 minutes longer in the same test. In everyday use case scenarios, the VivoBook 14 review unit did pretty well. With Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled, the screen set to 70% brightness, the laptop's battery charge halved in two and a half hours. During that time, I ran multiple instances of Chrome, worked with locally stored files, and played music for about 20 minutes at max volume through the speakers. Charging from 11% to 100 took nearly two and a half hours. Despite its pitiably low benchmark test score, the VivoBook 14 lasts somewhere between four and five hours on a single charge, which is decent, but nothing to write home about. Okay then, in summary, what do I like about the new VivoBook 14? The keyboard, the touchpad, and the performance. I think those three things are really great. But what do I not like about it? Hmm, let's see, that display is outright colorless, and man, does the laptop look boring. I really don't like the laptop's design. I think ASUS can do a whole lot better than that. Now, ASUS did not share the price with us at the time of recording this video. However, we estimate it to be around 50,000 or 60,000 rupees. But if it's anything more than that, I think it's gonna be a bit foolish. All right then, I hope you enjoyed watching this review. If you did, give us a like and do not forget to subscribe. I will see you in the next video. Ta-ta.